Okay, so Tommy, Stephen, and I ran over here to our next uh, set of projects. Uh, we're in a neighborhood about three or four miles from the project we just finished up. And we have two projects in here. Both of them not very big. So Steve's down here, 3017, pulling the loose material out. <coughs> Excuse me. You notice how he heals that and get everything nice and tight. Kind of a tough dig. Fortunately, there's not a lot of it. I'll follow it up with a shovel. Remove these in the grass, a little bit of dirt. We're matching that patio height coming across. This, this dirt becomes all concrete. You can see how it's just always dirty in here. And this will clean it up. They're going to come in and do some hillside work. Yeah, I'd nose it in, pull it back. Yeah, you'll have to do it in a couple different moves. Alright, I'm going to start getting some uh, heights set here. And you can watch Steve dig. How's that sound? I'll set you down over here. Tell me if he hits anything. But there's a bunch of bird eggs up there. Sure is tough video in the afternoon. Everybody just, including me, we need to get done for tomorrow. So we're just on prepping and getting ready for tomorrow. Real quick, Steve pulled back all the topsoil, loose material. Now it's tamping the undersoil. Next we'll be bringing in limestone and then we'll uh, put our rebar in. You can see a series of holes drilled. We're going to have to adjust that when it's way too low. And be ready for tomorrow. Okay, just about done. I know it was way too noisy. What I was saying was, it's hard to film in the afternoon. This is the busiest part of our day. We're trying to get ready for tomorrow. Mornings are hectic. Afternoons can be even more hectic. That's on stone. We're hugging the wood line. They're bringing heavy equipment in next week or in two weeks to take care of that hillside. They're going to add to it. I'm going to run up the street and look at number two project. So they'll get the stone in there in minutes. Move to our third and final project for today. We're doing a 30 inch border right beside this driveway going up there. Blue. Same on this side adding 30 inches once i dig it we'll determine if we can leave this maple tree coming all the way up and then it turns into a pad all this gets ripped out i believe it's 26 feet back here this will be the new corner of driveway okay let's get going A little bit of everything going on right now. Say that again. Okay, that worked out well. That's how we're going to leave it. 30 inch border, 30 inch border.
I did take a picture of this crack corner whenever I got here on my phone. So when I was digging it out, you saw I pulled that away. So you can see before I did any removal of the grass, you can see the crack right there. Let me zoom in one more time closer. In case anything said. So I just saw it, cut that off clean, incorporated it in. We'll run our expansion joint all the way past. We won't finish edge, we'll just blend that and we'll finish, you know, we'll make it look as good as we can. Okay, see you in the morning. Don't be late. Okay, bright and early. We had a huge rainstorm last night. Buggies were full of water. Bucket laying pretty flat. You can see that's full of water as well. Um, trying to be as quiet as we can. We're going to run an expansion joint down this wall and all the way around this concrete. I have more coming on the mixer. Just while it's quiet, I like to do the openers. Uh, again, uh, same old routine. Wire and rods up on chairs around the perimeter. We're going to use these ramps today to get down in. That will help protect this edge. Buggies uh, over this edge quite often could crack that. And it's really not the thickest driveway uh, we like to see. We like to pour ours about five inches thick. You can see even the edges here, you know. A little bit a little bit on the thinner side, so we want to try and do our best to protect it. No cracks in it, and there won't be any cracks in it when we're done. All right, Tony's due any minute. We are all set. Early, bright and early, here we go. All the expansion joint is cut to fit, laying right where we need it. I need one little piece right here. I think we are good to go. So they have apps for everything. I got this Trucker Path app, and it tells me that the way stations are open and closed. Uh, it just makes it a little bit easier planning our routes in the morning. Let's face it, we're under violation. The stuff in the bed's not tied down, but we're pretty good. I think we're pretty safe, but to get pulled over in the morning, go through a safety check, you know, that would set us back time. And like I said, we try and do our best. Uh, but there's no escape. They, uh, there's always something to be cited. Uh, so let me know your thoughts on those apps. W which ones do you like? Which ones work better? Uh, I use the Trucker Path app. I don't know. We'll see how it goes. Here comes our first buggy. I'll go ahead and get this. And then I'll go to time lapse and talk to you when we're done. See how it'll come up before it goes down? Get them seated in there. Let's go for the roll. Up and running. How'd everybody do on their bets on the Kentucky Derby? Pretty, pretty good race. Pretty exciting. Three, three-way photo finish at the end there. Okay, here we go. Okay, home stretch. Probably two buggies left. Now you get a little bit on the ground, I reach down, grab the rods, and pick them up. Trying to hold the expansion joint in place. I don't like to attach the joint. I want this to be separate from the driveway. Let everything move a little bit. 
nothing's going to settle. We're on solid ground and we are reinforced within itself. That's my thoughts on it. Hey, did anybody see the jogger come down, go around our orange cone, under the chute, around the buggies, and right back through here? Couldn't come down the other side of the street. That would be totally putting her out of her full day's routine. And then it would be my fault if she tripped and got hurt. sure this joint we want that nice and flush I got a little pile heading your way Maybe go to shovel after that. Last section. Take your time and make sure these are all filled in nice now. Slow and flat. I haven't said that one for a while. Now we can edge that. On to clean up in just a few minutes. Okay, just seconds after we're done pouring, everybody jumps on cleanup. Couple little splashes on the driveway. We will go ahead and broom this off. If we need to, we can get a power washer out here tomorrow. Can't do it today because of the wet border. A lot of this will just broom off as soon as we get a chance. Okay, there's our morning pour. Grab a sip of coffee while we do clean up. Okay, border is all edge. It's a little bit soft to get on up there. So we're gonna start making our easy cuts down here, running these straight off. Now we don't want these to come straight through. We want them to touch our border and then we'll give them a slight turn so that we go square through our border. Something like that. I think that'll look better than straight and that'll look out of square on the border. That's my thoughts. Let's get going up here. Steve's gonna start here. Let's go, let's go. I'll use that board to cut. Driveway is almost clean. Thank you, Chris. There we go. And here's my joiner. Hey. So we snapped the string in the concrete and got our nice straight mark, 30 inches back, 30 inches back. Put it in a cut. That way the border looks like it runs continuous up through this addition. And now for our next thing. We ripped our expansion joint. Cut it so straight I can't tell what shape it was. And we take that and we tap it in. Now we can run our edgers up 
and keep that same profile. See how it goes right in. You want to do this when the concrete's a little on the soft side. Okay, we'll take a look at that when they're done. And this one over here that we just pulled a string down this cut, parallel with the house, out four feet, just to match up to this existing cut. Uh, we'll just use a tool joiner to match. Okay, there's our one control cut that I wanted to show you. There's our border cut. That will come right down, turn into our border. So we may even broom this the opposite way. This gets broomed this way. We'll broom the driveway this way. That'll look nice. Steve wet stabbed his float in here and chopped this. Get good separation. So they got a new corner. rather than replacing the whole pad. Yeah, looks good. Okay, almost ready to broom. Busy little plan. Okay, with the concrete tightening up, over and back, just give it a nice broom mark. We don't wanna tear the concrete open, we just wanna give it some texture. I don't like it when guys wet the broom. It leaves a white streak, not to mention you're adding water to the surface of that concrete and it's weakening it. Ever so slightly, I get it. But these days we need all the protection we can get. Almost all done. A little bit of edging down here. We'll be hitting that parking spot shortly. Still a little bit soft. Where we started pouring, the concrete's the soft, ugh, softest. <laughs> there you go. So where it was in the truck longer, it gets a little tighter quick. I'll close out this project. I left the machine here. This dirt's pretty wet yet. I'm gonna do this at the end of the next project. That's just pulling off the couple of forms that are left. Let it roll away. And we'll just grab it and put it up in the grass. There it is all done. Our little corner intersection. I just radius that into my tool cut. There's their new border. Okay, on down the street, one more project in this plan. Okay, project two, we're gonna pull the Tony right down. We just sort of take over this whole cul-de-sac. It's nice when we have this much area as I eat my sandwich. Yesterday we brought stone in down along that side, but we got a lot of rain last night. So we're gonna stay out of there today. Once we get in there tearing that up, it could get a little bit slippery. You can see the grass is still damp, making that bend coming up there. Uh, didn't want to risk it. So a couple of traction mats. We're going to have to come down the driveway. 
not a lot of concrete so that's why we're doing this we'll do a quick turn here got our epiphone all in place right on the line taped not nailed that way we can adjust it if we need to okay expansion joint rebar all in place mixers do any minute okay they told me to go I'm gonna stick around until we get this little section done right here up ever so slightly Oh, is this high? Yeah. Yeah, the line's good. Right there. Okay, one, two, three more, and we'll hold up. I'm gonna go start grading. Alright, you wanna take him for a ride? Sure. It's recording. Okay, I just got back from grading the other property. This is ready for a broom. You can see how they just went side of post, side of post. Just a little stab here, and they'll probably just give it a little grinder mark right there. This breaks every single roll. I cannot explain it. Tight around the posts. not a relief cut anywhere and not a crack anywhere go figure i thought for sure there'd be a crack center off of that corner i don't know do i not know what i'm talking about looks good to me crack wise that is Okay, Tommy and I are on the road heading to projects for tomorrow, start prepping. When we leave the camera guys, when I get a little footage of this all done. But this shade line here from the deck is really nice to be working in because it's nice and cool, but it makes it a little bit difficult to finish concrete in. Because you, as you can see, that broom mark, oh boy, um, not that it looks bad, um, that's going to fade and cure and it'll, it'll all be blended, but you just kind of have to do it little by little. Um, the stuff out here in the sun got real tight, so we had to broom that first half and then Matt kind of broomed it a little bit to help with that shade line so we don't end up with a real hard line, but now we do need to wait a little bit longer before we can broom any of this so uh yep it's the waiting game that's the name of concrete hurry up and wait all right so i was able to get this first pad broomed up to our control cut um, now the thing with this second pad is since it has been in the shade no part of this has been in the sun it's taken it's good sweet time setting up and tightening up on top um so to broom it i need two handles on our broom here so that's going to increase the amount of weight we have out here 
So in order to keep for a nice broom mark, we need to let this get a little bit tighter than we would normally let it. Uh, that way the weight of the broom handles on the broom uh, won't do any excess tearing or uh, ripping. We'll have a nice fine broom mark. So just kind of sitting around waiting for that. All right, so that is one fine broom mark. Uh, there's no tearing. It doesn't. It didn't rip it up or anything. It looks uh, looks really nice. Um, I believe I heard there's a sauna or something going back here, so we wanted to keep this a nice fine um, broom mark. We didn't want it really torn open. Uh, didn't really have to worry about traction or anything back here. It's not like a steep hillside or anything, so. That's why we were waiting. We wanted it to look nice because it is going to be utilized uh, for something other than storage. So that is that. And uh, I believe I'm going to meet the guys at another job site. So uh, I will see you guys over there. Have a great, have a great drive over. Okay, as those guys finish up number two patio, number two project, Tommy and I <clears throat> are heading over to our prep stations for tomorrow prep projects for tomorrow so as I drive past I'll show you what I was up to down here just uh, touch and upgrade so we didn't leave it a total disaster I'll have the guys stop and grab <coughs> a couple of these cones it's quite dusty and pollen around here this time of year so there it is, all done. I just fluffed up around the edge for them. Now they can hit it with a rake. It was still a little bit wet. They can get a landscaper if they need to. That's how we like to leave. Okay, on to the next project.